Hey everybody, how's it going? Uh, I was going to make the next video on beginning canine trapping it was going to be set construction, but it's been raining here for several days and it's pouring down rain right now. So I'm in my shed and somebody requested me to do a video on the basic tools you need for uh, fur handling. So I'm going to skip ahead to this video and I'll get this posted pretty quickly. As far as skinning your animal, you could get away with just having a knife and you could just skin the animal out on a bench or something if you wanted to. And some people do that. I mean, a lot of this stuff is personal preference and what you're used to. Or just a knife and a hunk of rope to hang the animal up off of a tree or something. I've seen people do that. I do all my animals here in my little shed, so I got a different method. Uh, I do use knives, absolutely, but the one knife I use for most of the fur cuts and everything is this Weeby knife. I bought this last year. It's I love it because I'm not real great at sharpening knives, and if I'm in the middle of skinning an animal, I can pop this blade off, and they're interchangeable with Havilon blades. The one thing, the Havilon blades are slightly thicker than this, and I had to force the first one on and stretch that out a little bit. This is one of the Weeby blades. You can see it wiggles on there a little bit right now, so... But it still works really well. These are super sharp and they're easy to change and it just, I like it. I use an old fillet knife for doing all my cuts on my head, the eyes and the lips and stuff where they dull quick. This thing's sharp. This is the one thing I can sharpen half decent. I run it through that little basic sharpener. There's hunks of fur all over it. I use that for all my eye cuts and stuff. Because if you use that on eye cuts and stuff, don't get this and use it on, you'll dull it every time. Every animal, you'll dull that up fast. They're super sharp, but they'll dull quick cut and bone. Uh, this is a tool that you don't need, but it's fairly cheap and uh, it helps out once you get the animal skinned out. You can zip the tail open with this thing. The tail zipper, I'm not even sure what it's called, but they're like five bucks maybe. That's a handy tool, so you don't have to sit there and cut it with a knife. Pulling the tailbone out. This is a tail stripper. Uh, this one costs about ten bucks, I think. This price is still on it. No, seven ninety-five. I think I bought this down at Coquilomas Creek. But uh, has a different size hole for different size animals. You get once you get around the tail, you can use that to pull the tail off. That's a handy little tool. I use this pair of pliers. And sometimes vice grips for pulling ear cartilage out of the canines. Inevitably, you're going to put a hole in an animal unless you're really good. Especially when you start out. I use dental floss for sewing holes shut and just a regular needle. Or you can buy suture needles online. Either one's effective. I mean, if you have a nice sharp needle and a single thread of dental floss, you don't have to sew holes shut like 22 caliber size holes, especially on canines because they're fur out. So... So that, those are the tools I like to use for actually skinning the animal. Oh, one more tool. This hunk of steel, <clears throat> it's just, this is an old uh, torque wrench or something that was broke, I found. I just ground the end down here, made a nice point on it. This is great for poking like under the hind legs of coons and pulling them, or poking through the front shoulder of any animal and pulling the front shoulder off. This is a really handy little tool here. Like I said, some of the stuff you don't need, you can push your finger through there, but that's a lot easier. For combing out your fur, I just bought these at Walmart. I don't know, they're just dog combed or something. This heavy duty one here, this is great for combing out ticks and burrs, and I use this one just for like finishing up brushing the fur to make it look decent for presentation. And I always use nitrile gloves for skinning and fleshing and everything. I get these from Sam's Club. I get like 200 for 10 bucks or something. I don't even, they're, that's the cheapest place I've found these things. You can use a, just a rope to hang your animal up if you want to, but something that's not that expensive is a skinning gambrel. But I'm so cheap, I made my own. I copied the guy that let me use his shop. I copied his. This basically, I had all this junk laying around here, old hunks of cable restraint and uh, broken cable stakes, so I just made my own. I took a swivel, hooked a couple pieces of cable, and then here's where I hook my animal up. Right here, this is a double ferrule, and on I only pinched the one side shut on the double ferrule so I can slide this open. Put the animal's foot through there, slide it shut, and it holds it holds really well. It's I mean it can be a little 
pain sliding it open and stuff. But if I was gonna buy one, there's one I've seen it in trapping supply catalog. It, it looks similar to this, it, but it's done with chain, and this is like a real small chain that would go over the animal's foot. If I was buying one, that's the one I would buy. It's a little more expensive, but uh, that's the one I would buy. And if you want to, I mean, mine's hooked up to a, a winch, but it wouldn't be too hard just to get a pulley from Lowe's and have it on a rope and to pull it up and down, and lock it in place for however high you want it, depending on what animal you want. You might be skinning out a fox one day and a coyote the next day or who knows what, so you can raise and lower your your skinning gambler with a rope and pull it up out of the way. But mine, I got mine on a winch. So that's all the tools that I use for actually getting the fur off of an animal. I'm gonna winch my skinning gambler out of the way. Now we'll go over here and check out the equipment you'll need, or it's nice to have. Here, I'll show you where, basically I got my skinning gambrel on a pulley as far up as I can get it. I initially had that on a rope, where I just raise and lower it by hand, but then eventually a buddy of mine sold me an old uh, winch that I could use here, and that's really nice to have. <clears throat> now once you get your animal skinned out, you're gonna need to flesh the animal. I made my own fleshing board. You can make one out of a two by six. I got a tape measure here. Now this, if you plan on catching like, this works really well for coyotes, coon, and red fox, but gray fox are pretty narrow up front. And this is pretty good up front here. I got it about two and a quarter inches wide right at the nose of it. But at about seven or eight inches down, where the shoulders, the gray fox start, they're pretty narrow there, and I got this at about four, a little over four, four and an eighth inch inches. I need to, I'm going to taper that down a little bit more for gray fox. This is an old hunk of cherry board, but down here it's just as wide as a standard two by six, five and a half inches, so you can make one out of a standard two by six, or buy one from an auction, not an auction, but a, a catalog. And at about 18 inches down is where I have it at five and a half inches wide. So I just basically tapered it off. And I rounded this thing off. I took a sander and rounded it some. It's got, it's coved off and stuff a little bit. If you do just a standard two by six out of pine, it'd be a lot easier. This is some hard cherry wood. But so I made my own, I made it to flip up out of the way. On some hinges and stuff. That works pretty nice. Once you get your animal in you for the actual fleshing, this is just the uh, the fleshing tool that a buddy of mine let me use when I first started back in the trapping. It's a Necker 600. It's got a nice cutting edge on this side for like doing the, the backs, the necks of coons, <coughs> and a nice dull edge for just pushing basic fat off. When you're fleshing, never have your, your blade perpendicular to the animal. You always want to have it at an angle. You want to push the fur off. You're not trying to scrape it and stuff unless you're doing the back of the neck. You're pushing the fat off the animal. This is an old arrow stand I use. For, I use a lot of those for archery shooting in my yard, but it worked out pretty well for a, a fleshing tool holder too. So when I'm moving the animal around on the uh, fleshing beam, I put my fleshing tool in there and move my animal and grab that back whenever I need it. These aprons, they're pretty nice to have. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, they're about 15 or 20 dollars from a supply catalog. Got one of those, they're nice to have. Keeps all the fat and gunk off your your clothes. Uh, the stretchers that I use. Somebody told me when I first started that wire stretchers were easier to use, so I bought wire stretchers, but I don't agree with that. I like, <laughs> these, for me, they're, the wooden stretchers are easier to use, and thanks to my buddy Joel again, he gave me like a half a dozen of these and they work great. I love the, these wooden stretchers. And I, even like some of these, I started converting them to uh, have a base, have a wooden base at the bottom for pinning the animal off some of my wire stretchers. I'll probably end up doing all of them like that. I've always had problems with these things sliding around and stuff on here. 
they were a pain. I had to put clothes pins all over and I was tying wire off to hold them down. It's just way easier to put the animal on here and push the pins on and get it where you need to be. Especially for coons, it makes a real, really, really nice presentation for coons. And thanks to my brother Don. He learned me a lot of, <laughs> learned me. <laughs> he taught me a lot about woodworking and I can do a lot of my own uh, woodworking stuff and I'm making some more of my own wooden stretchers so I don't have a lot of money invested in these. Those are more expensive than the wire ones though. If you want the wire ones and you're going after coyotes, especially eastern coyotes, you want number six stretchers though for the coyotes, definitely. And for fox, usually the number fours are plenty big enough for, for grays and reds. Uh, let's see, one of the things I would, I mean, as I knock over a bench, this is something that I'm glad I invested some more money in. This is about 60 or 70 bucks. You can get one real cheap, but I'm glad I got a good fleshing tool. So that's something I would spend a little extra money on, is the fleshing tool. If you're gonna go with the wooden stretchers, you'll need to get some push pins. And don't, I've tried these, don't waste your time on just general household push pins. Like get, spend six bucks or whatever it is and get a hundred uh, of the heavy duty push pins from the supply catalog. I've looked on Amazon and stuff and they're about the same price. I don't think you get, in, get them any cheaper than a supply catalog, so. And that's about that, so. Here, I can pick my bench back up. And then that's how I, not how, but that's the tools that I use for skinning out and fleshing and all that stuff. So if you've got any questions, let me know. And I appreciate all the comments and all the feedback and stuff. If you want to see something else on a video, let me know and I'll try to get to it as soon as possible. And I'm going to get to the set construction stuff and the other videos whenever the weather clears up. So, all right, thanks again for watching. Out here.